There are certain things in America that can be unforeseen. But we have a problem in America that was foretold. Thomas Jefferson said, The great object of my fear is the federal judiciary. He said that body like gravity, ever acting with noiseless foot, gaining ground step by step, and holding what it gains, is engulfing insidiously the special governments into the jaws of that which feeds them. He warned us that the federal government would become as venal and oppressive as the government from which we separated because of the federal judiciary. There is this deception that is overtaking America an idea implanted in the psyche of the people that we are not allowed to question federal judges. That is destructive to the liberty of the people. That is contrary to the foundation of America, and that is contrary to the Constitution of the United States. Article 3, Section 1, Clause 2 reads... Judges both of the supreme and inferior courts shall hold their offices during good behavior. We are to question their behavior. Their behavior is the term of their employment. And yet we have federal judges who act so far outside those terms that to say it was bad behavior would be a gross understatement. For example, you have Gloria Navarro in Nevada during the Bundy standoff trial who has barred defendants from discussing why they traveled thousands of miles to join the protesters at Bundy Ranch. She did not allow the defendants themselves to testify about the perceived abuses of federal authority during the cattle roundup that motivated them. The defendants are not allowed to even mention their motivations Navarro restricted the defendants from raising constitutional arguments or mounting any defense based on their right to freedom of speech, right to peaceably assemble, or their right to keep and bear arms. Navarro said the Constitution is not applicable in her courtroom. She took an oath to defend, support and defend the Constitution of the United States without hesitation or mental reservation. And now she declares it's not available in her courtroom. Anna Brown from Oregon, the same type of case, flat out blocked any portion of the Constitution to be read or recited in her courtroom. And she routinely changed the rules and the instructions to the juries in midstream just to manipulate the case so she could get the outcome she wanted. This is gross and egregious behavior. But there's a victory in here. Because you see, the juries of both of these judges saw what was happening in the courtroom and delivered a not guilty verdict for these defendants. Let me tell you something. This not guilty verdict was not just a not guilty verdict for the defendants. It was a guilty verdict for these judges. They saw what was going on. They felt the manipulations. They realized this was not how a courtroom was supposed to operate. And in their conscious wisdom of liberty, they chose liberty first and said it does not matter. These defendants are not guilty. This is why jury nullification is so important and an essential check and balance. This is why Gloria Navarro, this is why Anna Brown doesn't, they don't like the Constitution because the Constitution means liberty and limits their power. J. Thomas Martin in Kansas declares the Constitution is not credible in his courtroom and that the Constitution doesn't mean anything unless he says it means. He says the Constitution means what I say it means. This is a problem when those who are limited by the Constitution can determine its own meaning. This is not someone who is to apply justice, not someone who is to defend the Constitution. This is someone who manipulates it for their own cause. Royal Ferguson in western Texas declares in a civil case 
that he has the authority and control of the U.S. Army, the Navy, the Marines, and the Air Force, and the U.S. Marshals to effectuate his orders. When a defendant in his courtroom expressed a desire to appeal Judge Royal Ferguson's order, Judge Royal Ferguson says, if you don't comply with my order, it is punishable by lots of dollars, jail, and death. How is it that we have federal judges acting in such bad behavior that they no longer feel compelled to defend the Constitution? Judge Dick Posner says, I see absolutely no value to a judge of spending decades, years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, or even seconds studying the Constitution. This is bad behavior. I want you to hear in your own ears the words of Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch. But Senator, when you attack the integrity or honesty or independence of a judge, their motives, as we sometimes hear, Senator, I know the men and women of the federal judiciary, a lot of them. I know how hard their job is, how much they often give up to do it, the difficult circumstances in which they do it. It's a lonely job, too. I'm not asking for any crocodile tears or anything like that. I'm just saying I know these people and I know how decent they are. And when anyone criticizes the honesty or integrity, the motives of a federal judge, well, I find that disheartening. I find that demoralizing because I know the truth. Anyone, including the President of the United States? Anyone is anyone. Because no person is above the law, including the President of the United States. That's right, Senator. Of Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch, who shockingly declares that it is demoralizing, he says, to criticize the intentions, motivations, or honesty of a federal judge. He even makes the implication that to question a federal judge's intentions, motivations, or honesty is an unlawful act. No, Mr. Gorsuch. Questioning the intention, the morality, and the honesty of a judge is not an immoral act. It is the duty of every citizen of the United States. It is the duty of every person living under this constitutional republic. And it is absolutely within the job description of every congressman that sits in Washington, D.C. These judges hold their positions based on good behavior alone. How do you judge their good behavior but by judging their intentions, their morality, and their honesty? When we eliminate the possibility of even criticizing a judge, then we establish through error, deception, and distortion that these judges do not have their appointments based on good behavior, but lifetime appointments. We need to start upholding the Constitution as people. We need to start demanding that we question, not questioning the questioning of a judge, but demanding the questioning of a judge. The Constitution requires us to question a judge, and we need to hold suspect anyone, regardless of political party or ideology. We need to hold suspect any person who denies us our right to question a judge and remove them for bad behavior. America will become as venal and oppressive as a totalitarian kingdom if we do not wake up, follow the Constitution, and start questioning these federal judges. Whether you be the plumber down the street or the President of the United States, you have a duty and an obligation to question the intentions, the motivations, and the honesty of a federal judge. It's their only term of employment.